Hey, good morning. I want to go ahead and welcome everybody here to the Pinion Podcast, part of the Trinitarian Church. And uh, today I have, man, it's awesome. I've been trying to get Pastor Dale Parkhurst on the uh, show with us for a long, long time. And uh, for good reason. Uh, I'll tell you just, you know, as I always do, I always want to introduce our guests. And Dale and I, uh, we did, we we had an opportunity to meet while um, at GCU, at Grand Canyon University. We were both seminary students there. And I remember always being impressed with with Dale's demeanor, because um, I just feel like, it, you know, if you have experience as a pastor, um, it tends to show itself. Uh, it's a, almost like an extroverted, you know, value instead of something that kind of washes over you and changes you from the inside out. But I saw that in Dale. Dale's very, very kind with absolutely everybody that was around him. Uh, I remember being invited to come eat by him. Uh, these are small things that we don't think are significant uh, in the moment, but Boy, oh boy, do they hold value. And uh, cool. just as you all know, I was going to seminary under just tough conditions because we uh, the church had split. Uh, I mean, I saw some things that I never thought I was going to see in God's church, <laughs> and I was hurting. And it was our last final uh, residency. We all had a chance to, to preach the word there for a little bit. And, uh, you know, man, I was just hurting that day. And, and Dale came over, and I'll, I will never forget it. He told me, I don't do this often, and I believe it. <laughs> But he came over, gave me a hug, told me he was proud of me. And, you know, when uh, your older brother does that for you, someone that you're looking up to, someone that you can respect, this carries value that uh, I just don't think this world understands. And uh, it's good. It's good that the world doesn't understand because this is something us, we that are on this side of belief, we can cherish these moments. We can hold on to them. So that's my introduction for Dale. There's no way he could live up to that now, but we're going to go ahead. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the body of Christ. We're just going to go over the passage and we're going to share our thoughts. And I hope that this uh, speaks to you. Dale, if you want to, I, I can go ahead and just read this entire passage or uh, would you like to maybe go half and half on it or? Uh, it's yeah, up to let, you, me, man. let me get out the, um, oh yeah, the words are there on the page. <laughs> so without these, I have just got, yeah. you know. So, anyways, yeah, let me read the, uh, let me read, the, <laughs> let me read the, you know, I, I do remember the day that, that you read, uh, if you want to read, you were, I do remember that day, Alice, because you were hurting that day, but uh, for, for all those that are watching, let me tell you something, Alex blew us away with his message, um, we all gave, I thought, pretty good messages, but when Alex got up there to give his message, the rest was just sat back and said, what happened to us? Uh, his message was that powerful and that strong. It really was. And uh, no, it was, Alex. You know it was. Amen. And it was a very, very, very powerful I message. That. And I, I, I still haven't forgot it. I have notes from that day. So don't tell me. I'll pull the notes out and show everybody, Alex, uh, where I gave you an A. <laughs> and I do not give them out very often. <laughs> All right. That's right. <laughs> this is, this says just as to, the Bible, uh, verse 20, and that'll be first. Yeah, 12 through 20. I'll read that. Uh, Got it. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we are all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given to one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Amen. Verse 21 says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we find to, to have less honor, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, we treat with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. 
But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing and of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have the gift of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. So a bit of a long one there, but we had to get through that, I think, to uh, really understand this thing. And I've always yeah. been fascinated by this. This is one of the... Uh, Dale, this is one that we go over in the house a lot. I feel like uh, when God says, you know, he brought the church and he says, I'm going to use this analogy as a body. I feel like it's also a great analogy for family. Uh, but I don't know. Why do you think God would choose, I, I guess, like a body to represent his church, his people? Well, to me, Alex, I, I wrote down some notes. And, and one of the things that I noticed that when God did this, yeah, I think he did it to, to uh, demonstrate the fact that uh, the body of Christ, as he says here, has many parts, but every body, every part has a different function. You know, we all can't be the pastor. If we were all, if we were all the pastor, you know, who's going to listen? We can't, we can't continue to sing to the, or preach to the choir all the time. So when I began thinking about this, but I'm going to share briefly what God, what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. Now, when Paul talks here about the body, of course, he uses the eye, the ear, you know, the nose and so on and so forth, the parts that we see, okay? But Paul didn't go into the inner working of the body. For example, the lungs, the heart, the intestines, the stomach, the muscles, the backbone, the brain, which is the center of it all. Nor did he, and this may sound gross to some people, he didn't discuss about the anus. And there's a reason. That's where the waste comes out, Right. There's, there's there's garbage in the church, right. so it's got to come out. There's got to be people that have pushed that garbage out. So I th when I think of the body, I can't just think of that which I see. I have to think of that which is inside working in order for the outside to be seen by others and working. That's what I got out of it. I love it. I love it. I, I think that one of the great examples that I've learned the hard way is I, I learned that the, the reason in my understanding why God has chosen the body and has used this parable the way he has is because it is so inextricably relatable. I, I'll give you this short parable of my own. I was eating the most delicious ice cream. Uh, uh, it was like a, I don't know, it was some kind of, it was a Snickers ice cream bar. It doesn't even sound like it oh. should exist, but it <laughs> did, and I loved it. And I was walking through the house with it. And I'm loving life. I'm just enjoying things. And then uh, my my toe stubbed the bottom leg of one of the couches. And immediately, as awesome as this ice cream was, I had no concern for the ice cream. I couldn't even taste the ice cream. All I could see was red and pain. <laughs> and although it was my toe, I'll be honest with you, I don't think my hand was, was uh, far too happy with what was going on. My entire body seized up and reacted. And the joy that I once had of this ice cream and my taste buds going nuts, you know, talking about some of the things that uh, are unmentionable. My, my taste buds were on fire. My brain was sending receptors saying, hey, trust me, this is incredible. <laughs> and then one small toe said, no, let me show you guys uh, how this stuff really works. And yeah. I tell you, I was out, Dale. It, it, this, this was uh, for me, all of a sudden, I was thinking about the church. <laughs> So why do you think God chose, um, I, I love you know, the, the, this uh, body representation of the church, but I feel like this, it sounds like when we re read it together, I feel like this is so straightforward. It feels like this is uh, it pretty succinct. It seems to make sense to me, uh, not just the parable, but even the reality of that parable. Uh, like, you know, the parable of the sower. I'm not a farmer, but it does make sense to me. But here, this parable of the body, I have one of those. And so I can relate to this passage, and I, and I know how it works. But I also know that, like this, this can be very challenging. As much as a as a, as it seems straightforward, this can be extremely challenging. 
Um, for me, like I said, the example was very clear. My, my example is I was happy. Oh man, I was so joyful. I was so excited. And then one thing happened and all of that excitement seemed to just be curbed for a moment. Yeah. And I really feel like this can happen to us in the church as well. I don't know if you have any experience in that area as well, Dale. Uh, no, not so much. Um, but when I, when I think of the body and I think of Christ, I think of God, and I, I automatically go right to the brain first because the brain is the central part. The brain is the, the control center, if you want to call it that. Uh, and I look at the body as being God inside us, all right? So it's God seated at the throne, God seated at the head, which is in here. And then, of course, the rest of the body, you know, God controls things from that central part. And the brain, the brain sends out all kinds. You don't you ever stop to think how much information our body takes in in one day just through the eyes in just one minute? It is incredible. Billions of data, bits of data is coming through our eyes and through our ears, uh, through our nose. Uh, people don't really appreciate how God has put this all together. And when I think about that, I think, well, here's God sitting up here in heaven and just like the body of Christ, he controls everything. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Everything, Alex. Woo. I mean, the seas, the rain, the sun, the moon, the stars, uh, every human being. And it's like reading this morning about the different types of flesh. You know, the, the, the birds have one flesh, the animal, the beast have one flesh, reptiles have a flesh. We have a flesh, uh, and God put all this together to all all of these things to work together. You know, we we, we need to respect yeah. we we need to respect God how He created nature, so that nature could work with us, and that we, it's because it was formed for us. And what does He say in Second Peter one three? God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. So therefore, when, 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 when he did all this stuff, I mean, it's, it's absolutely incredible the way he designed everything to work together. And it doesn't necessarily have to be one denomination or one church. I got news for these cats. You know, God doesn't care what denomination you are. Just because you, I mean, just because you were a pointed hat or a robe, he could care less whether you do or not. God wants to see what that heart is. Hey, tell him the truth out here, Dale. Man, he... <laughs> You know, I, 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 I sometimes get so upset with these people that um, you need to call me bishop. You need I my bishop is the coolest bishop in the universe because he'll come up and he'll tell a person quick. Don't call me bishop. My name is Bob. I don't care about that bishop title. I'm Bob. <laughs> I'm Brother Bob. <laughs> or Robert. I mean, I just love I'm him. Like man. Bob already. I'm telling you, you would love him. Bob is 87 years old and he's. He's one of the spryest men I ever met in my life, Alex. You would you would fall in love with this man, and you know, I and him and I, already. I, yeah, him and I talk about the body once in a while, and, and he'll look at me and he'll say, you know, he said when I'm thinking about God bringing things together, he said, for example, a man and a wife when he brings them together, he said they're making those two bodies one. Isn't that perfect? I mean, that's he's bringing those two bodies together as one, so that they can procreate. I bring other little bodies in here. Someday we'll be matched up with somebody, except me. I'm still single. Uh, <laughs> to be as one. And the only reason I'm single <laughs> is because I because I made a vow to God that I would remain single in order for uh, to enhance the ministry. That's that's it. So, so go ahead, sir. What's what's your what's on your mind now? There, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just, as you were talking. I was like, gosh, man, this is making so much sense, and I. I couldn't help but to think about uh, just the idea that we do. We we're, we're there seems to be an obvious design where we work together. I love uh, Bob's example when we talk about a husband and wife. That is a very uh, micro example mm -hmm. of this concept, where, and that's just with two people. Two and people. we know where the divorce rate stands, and we know even where the divorce rate stands in the church. Those that are Christians, those that should have a conviction about what that covenant means. And even we carry a very high divorce rate. So if two people can't get it together, what hope is there for the church? Well, the hope is, like you said, the head is still in control. Yes. Because yes, I think yes. if it were up to us, my goodness. <laughs> I would be, my goodness. Oh. But I love what he says here because I, I, I read this to my kids all the time. 
because I'm not the hand, I don't belong to the body. And that's the way we can be sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I stopped going to this church. Why is that? Was it false doctrine? Did you, what happened? Were you pushed out? Was there spiritual abuse? No, they wouldn't let me preach. And God knows that that's what I've been called to. <laughs> I said, well, good night. Man. I, you know, I mean, we're, if we we're all called to this one thing, you know, and I often give this example and no one likes this example. Dale, you might be strange enough like myself to appreciate this, but I always ask this in counseling. How many King Davids were there? There was one. How many people one. were under him? About a million. Yeah. You know, there's one King David and about a million followers. And so, and but we're all busy trying to be King David. Just follow Christ. Why? Because you have yeah. your own role. The hand can't say, because, I, because you didn't recognize my incredible talent, I'm out of here, guys. That's fine. But what you've done is you've not only harmed that particular body, but you've harmed yourself. Anytime yeah. you have an yeah. injury, you're going to feel it. like one of these examples I really like is, uh, have you ever hurt your thumb, Dale? Have you ever just jammed a finger? Don't go there, Alex. <laughs> you might not want to hear the words I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I jammed, <laughs> I have jammed a thumb one time and I was doing the most basic thing in the world. I was just trying to pour milk into my breakfast cereal. And I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Something I had done millions of times and I couldn't because my thumb was just, it, it turned out it was dislocated as a hairline fracture. I didn't know that at the time, but I just couldn't with four yeah. capable fingers. I still, and so this, this, this one finger held up the entire operation. And I don't think that we see things like that anymore. I don't think we, well, we recognize that anymore. I think we see like the hand says, Hey, because I'm not the foot guys, guess what? I'm gone. What, well, are, you, what are you thinking there, Dale? Let's, let, let's take a look. You, you use King David and, and King David's a great example, but I want to go back a little further. Let's take Moses. Do it. Moses. I mean, my goodness gracious. Here's a man that God called, uh, when he was, well, I would still say as a baby, but but he was called, no doubt. He had to go through his trials. He had to go through his tribulation. Abraham, the same way. They had to go through their cycles. But look what God used these people for. I mean, these were just basic, down-to-earth, regular, common individuals. And yet God used them to what? To be the head over millions of people. How many people crossed through the Red Sea? We can't count them all. I mean, well, in fact, in fact when, you, when you get to heaven... God's going to ask you a question. How many people went across the Red Sea? Oh, 7.3 million. Name them all. <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> but it's, and the point is, is that God, God uses the people that we would least expect to show, to, just to show how much yes. he is in control. The people that we least expect to be leaders as leaders. And then there are some people that we look as leaders. Well, we won't get into the modern day politics, um, but <laughs> I will. I will definitely that, leave that alone. But yeah, I like to. Yeah, I like to go back and use the <laughs> biblical leaders because when I think about Moses, I think about Abraham, I think about Daniel, for example. Oh my God, Alex, that man was incredible. Daniel was a powerful individual. Joseph. I hear Joseph is come. Yeah, Joseph is coming out of prison. He's been in prison. The Pharaoh likes what he does, and the next thing you know, he's in charge of an entire nation. An ex con. <laughs> now, and yep. people are yep. people. Are, now, this is this is gonna, probably going to blow some people's mind. Yet, all these people are a part of the body of Christ. Isn't that amazing? They all compose, comprise of the body of Christ. Someday we'll get, you know, Moses might be a little finger that, you know, your thumb you might jammed up, right? Um, David might be <laughs> part, of the, part of the leg. We don't know. But they all had a significant role, which in our bodies, our teeth have a significant role. Our tongue has a significant role. Right. Our fingers. You know, you ever stop to think how many movements our fingers go through? The things that they can do? Oh, it's incredible. Alex. So, yeah. So when I think about the body of Christ, I have to go way back and I have to include all of those people. Uh, some people wouldn't include them. But what about Ruth? What about uh, Rahab? 
They're, they're all part of the body that played a significant people. Who would think that God was going to use a prostitute? The people that uh, all the people looked down on them, but right. God chose a prostitute woo, to, to become the great grandmother of what? Mm. It's incredible. Bro, I tell you, uh, people used to ask the question. Uh, this was popular for a while. It's like, what, what do you, what do you think your calling is? What do you believe? And I used to, you know, it's not a comfortable question for me. I don't, I've still haven't figured it out outside to follow. Uh, but I often would say, I feel like uh, many times God has called me to shame the wise, and I only say that because I know I'm a very simple man, and I actually enjoy it. It's not. A, I'm not trying to cut myself down. This is not a self esteem slight. Um, I just believe that I'm a pretty simple, straightforward guy. And I have found at times that uh, God will use that approach, as consistent as it is, to turn into something that I couldn't have predicted, that I couldn't have seen coming. And oftentimes it will put someone that is in a higher position than myself. It kind of brings them back down to reality. And so I have seen that a couple of times is that God always works through uh, what you wouldn't expect. Because King David, he didn't start out as King David, didn't he? No, no. he did not. Rahab. In the lineage of Jesus, who is the Christ, <laughs> did not start out as the spy that helped. She started no, out as a prostitute. As a prostitute. You know, Abraham was not the father of faith right off the bat. Abraham had to lie twice about his wife. <laughs> he had to go through that series with Lot. He, I mean, he had things to go through, but none of us want to go through this. Like, because I'm well, not the foot right now, I'm yeah, out of here. Yeah. But yeah. give yourself time to develop. Give yourself time to find a function for yourself. I like this, and this is where we're going to get into something juicy here. The Bible says this in verse 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. I love this for one reason. We know that this is a body analogy. But we know that the body represents the church. And the head of the church is Christ. And here... I'm not going to get too deep into it because scholars go back and forth on this all the time. But I love the idea that the head can't say to the feet. The head is that is the matriarch. That's the patriarch. That's where the control center takes place. That's the most vital, important thing. And what does he do? He says, I can't tell all the way down to the bottom of the foot. I can't tell that foot that I don't need him. And I feel like we've gotten this wrong. In the sense that uh, we feel like his later on, it says, on the contrary, those parts that seem weaker, they're indispensable. And the ones that are with less honor, we give them special honor. But the ones that are presentable, we don't give them that. And yeah. yet, how many of us know our pastors by first name, have them on speed dial, are contributing to their 401k retirement fund in paradise, are, you know, yeah. all these different. And where's the humble person in all of this? You know, well, they're expected to sit quietly and give a tithe check. Yeah, we we were talking about that this morning in uh, my uh, my little Sunday morning uh, Bible study group, um, and somebody was talking about three three, uh, especially two pastors that the three of us follow is Chuck Swindoll and um, and uh, Tony Evans. Um, these men are such fantastic teachers, but they're the most humble men you could ever meet in your life. And you have to wonder, how do they separate the humility from their, I guess your fame is where you want to call it, but they do. And, Amen. Yeah. And, and Chuck Swindoll talks about that constantly. Chuck Swindoll talks about it. He says, look, I'm Chuck. He doesn't, you don't have to call him Dr. Swindoll. That's Chuck to everybody or Charles. And Tony Evans the same way. Tony says, you call me Tony. You don't have to call me Dr. Evans. The doctor is just a title that a bunch of men put on me. <laughs> and and I and I can appreciate it. I want to read something that because I said, saw something in the Bible, in my in one of my study Bibles, that Chuck Swindoll wrote. He said the Apostle Paul loves to refer to the church as the body of Christ. The body is the entire family of God on earth today, not just in your church or my church, but all around the world in this body. Christ is the head, while some of us are arms. Some are fingers and some toes. Some are parts of the body that are seen and some are organs that are not seen. But we are all in one great body together around the world. That's the picture. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's outstanding. I like that. I really did. Mm. I wonder if... I, 
I think about this often. If suffering is bad, I feel like in the church, we're always trying to put someone in a good mood. And amen, we ought to uh, encourage one another all the more, especially if it's called today, you should be encouraging somebody. <laughs> and guess what, folks? It's today as well. So, you know, we should be out there encouraging for sure. But it seems that this passage it hits an area that I don't think we talk about too often. It says, well, if one part rejoices or is honored, we all rejoice with it. That's the part I think we can all celebrate and get behind. Like, yeah, man, I love that. Like, I want to see you do good. Let me hear your victory in Christ story. Let me hear. But it's very rare that uh, we take this this role of, say, if one part suffers, every part suffers. Yes, yes, yes. I think that this we've lost this. I think we've lost the art of suffering. I think that there is something to be said about the suffering servant, that it's not a bad thing. It's maybe been painted in the picture that shouldn't be, because if you are suffering, you should not be alone. And yet, when people suffer, this is when you see people leave churches. This is when you see people. Yeah. And then when you ask, hey, what happened to Susan? What happened to Tim? The answer can be very cold hearted. Like, oh, they fell away. Yeah. No, they're a part of the body. How could that be possible? Get you, we got to go in there and we have to do the good. You have to take the responsibility of saying, look, I'm not the, the hand where that person was. I'm just a foot. But everything that that hand does, I appreciate everything that I'm going to be there for the foot. I'm going to be there for the hand. I'm going to I'm going to try and I'm going to sit there. And if they want to cry, guess what? I'm going to sit there and I'm going to cry with them. And I think that there's a value to this. I think that there's something missing where we're just, we've only held pep rallies. We've only held joy, 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 but we haven't had the time to say, guys, this life is hard. You will, in fact, face troubles. The reason we take heart is because Jesus overcome the world, but we're told we're going to be in trouble. So has there been a time, Dale, where you have found yourself in this area of the body where either you or someone else is suffering and you've gotten in oh, there yeah. with them or yeah. you know you yourself are hurting and someone came to your rescue and said hey yeah. i'm right here with you i i have um in fact this morning when we got done with our study group i i i, I mentioned to the men something that i'm going through right now and uh and and the three of us understand the importance of this that we need each other's support we need each other's prayers we need each other's encouragement. Uh, my young friend, I call him my best friend. I, I really wished I could. Inter with he was here to introduce him to you. He's from from Nairobi, uh, Kenya, from Nairobi, Africa, Kenya, Africa. He's one of the nicest young men. He's my adopted, self adopted spiritual son. Uh, he's a recovering addict. Um, he has now been twenty months clean. Uh, he's given his heart to Jesus Christ. He's an amazing, amazing young man. And we've gotten to know each other so well that it took me a long time to assure him that I said, James, when you hurt, I hurt. And I said, because the spirit will tell me you need Amen. to I, the fact this past week, Alex, and I know you've been, you've experienced this. There's two days in a row that God woke me up at two o'clock in the morning and said, you need to pray for James or you need to pray for Alex or the case may be, you know, and I think when we do that, we need to be sensitive to the fact that the Holy Spirit has put upon our hearts that somebody's hurting, we need to contact that person and say, look, the Lord woke me up this morning and, and, and put on my heart to pray for you. You know, is there anything that we need to discuss, anything that I could help you with? I think when we do that, first of all, we show God's love. We show the love of Christ in us. And second of all, we show the individual, I really do care about you and am concerned. And we don't do enough of that in the church. What? The, church, the church is more important about what's in the plate and what's in, how big is your donation and the offering than they are about the people who are putting on a good show, or the dance show, or the mimes with good, you know, poppycock and all that stuff. You don't want to go to my church. We ain't going to have none of that stuff. But, <laughs> but it's just <laughs> – I'm serious, man. I mean, I, I don't go to church to be entertained, Alex. I go to church to be fed the word of God. I'm hungry for the word of God. We need And it. right now what you and I are doing, I've never told you this, but this is a dream come true for me. This really is. I have wanted to do something with you for so long that I thought, well, how can I fly out to New Mexico and be with this clown just so I can sit down and talk with him? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and oh, we'd fly Ray for sure. And I would have I, to tell Ray, by the way, the both of us have been replaced. There's a gentleman in Nairobi that neither one of us can hang with. He is the true adopted son. You and I have lost our position. Yes, yes, yes. 
foray. You know? <laughs> I, I, and I got thinking, what a what a wonderful conversation that'd be to have Ray, you, myself, Carolyn, and Carolyn, and Diana, and just oh my God, Alex, that would be. I'm telling you, we would blow the screens up. And I'm going to continue praying for that I until agree. it happens. I agree. I, until it happens. So, Amen. We, I would love it. I would love to have a GC. If you guys are, and I know Felicia listens because she'll send me a comment here. Felicia, uh, I love you her. need to set something. You're in Phoenix already. You're going to be, yeah, you're going to be our contact person and uh, we're going to have to make it happen. But <laughs> let me tell you something, Dale, when you were speaking, I, the first thing that hit me when you said uh, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit, because think about it, we're all part of the body. The head is Christ, and the spirit obviously is the spirit of that body. And when the spirit wakes you up and you begin to obey and you go, what part of the body wouldn't be encouraged to hear that conversation? What part of the body wouldn't be like, man, I really didn't want to have this conversation. No, we, we run to those things. Um, I really believe in a very sincere way what we do in this moment when you participate with the divine nature like that and you leave her behind the, the, the corruption of flesh and things of this nature, I really believe you begin to spiritually wash people's feet. You yeah, begin yeah, to act yeah. as Jesus did. You begin to take off the robe and say, look, although I wear a crown, because here's the deal. Think about this for a second. Let's say that we're not, you're not, a, I don't know, one of the presentable parts of the body. You're a gallbladder, you're, I don't know, a kidney, whatever. I, I, you know, one of the internal things that we can't see and you're treated with special modesty. How do you still find joy in that? And I think that this is where we've done a disservice in the church is we draw joy in serving God only through preaching of the word and not, and we forget about the guy that came in and he set up all the song books uh, the guy that came in and did the lights and made sure that the speakers were set up in the right position and made sure, you know, all the little things that go into everything. And then the, the worshiper itself, like you were saying, if all of us were a teacher, who in the world would listen? You know, there'd be there'd be nothing oh but teachers God. out there. There'd it'd be like the yeah. old saying, there'd be all these chiefs, but no, no workers. No, you know, it, it's it's crazy to think that this is so simplistic. And yet. I feel like we really have got a long way to go, but I think that was the best example I have heard of how to participate in the body when you're not what you thought you were going to be. Right. And I think all of us, you know, the Bible is very clear. It tells us to not think uh, so highly of ourselves, so highly of ourselves but yeah. to do it with yeah. sober judgment. And I, I think it has to, because if you ask me what part of the body you are, I mean, good nights. I mean, all of us are going to take a really cool position. Like, what part of the bicep? Oh, I'm the bicep, clearly. I'm the beard. Uh, you know, you're, you're going to find stuff that's fun. Not many people are going to be like, uh, yeah, I'm the 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 third, in, the toe that's kind of near the pinky, yeah. but between, you know. No, you're, you're probably not going to pick that but, one. You're probably going to choose something presentable. But we forget that it's the it's the the ones that aren't presentable. The ones, you don't the ones see. that are treated with special modesty. And if it doesn't happen at the church... It's going to happen with the spirit. Well, stop stop and think about the fact that inside, internally, like the gallbladder has a very big function, just as the kidney uh, and the liver. And there are parts of the body that warn the other parts of the body, hey, something's happening. Come on, get it together. You know, get get the, the white the white corpuscles, corpuscles, whatever you want to call them things. Um, let's, let, let's get together because we got something invading the body, something coming in that's bad. We got to attack it. The church needs to do the same thing, especially now with what's going on in, in, in this world, in our nation, with all the pornography, with all the all the hatred, all the division. The, the, some people in the, the pastors have got to stand and say, oh, come on now, we got to get this together. Let's warn everybody that the enemy's out to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. That's his mission. And he's doing his mission well. Let's be real about that. He is doing his mission very well. Yay. The body is not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I still say that had the church in the 50s and 60s, and I'm not blaming the church back then, but I'm just saying, had they back in those days stood up, started standing up for different things, uh, like when I when I was a kid, there was a lot of things that are going on today that's immoral that the churches back in the 50s and could, would never, would never discuss because it was all. Oh, I can't discuss that with the people. Why? Because they were afraid that they would lose people coming to the church who would support them financially. 
And that's why you go to a church to speak in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the truth. It's a small congregation. You go to a church who's tickling the ears and they got a humongous congregation. Let's be real about that. And this is the same thing. The body needs to yeah. be warm. We got those inner things in our bodies. There's a pain. Maybe you got a pain on the left side. Maybe you, maybe there's something that's trying to come out. You look down and you see a red spot. It's infected. The body's telling you there's something going on inside. And the church needs to be aware of this, that God is sending messages. There's something going on inside the body. we got to take care of it. Amen. That's what I got, Alex. That's probably the – that's – Got to be one of the best. Oh, well, I appreciate it, Dale. My goodness. My goodness, do I appreciate that. Let me give you this example, and I hope this encourages this uh, this brother, this young man. Uh, actually, I think he's a little bit older than I am, but uh, there's a gentleman I met a while back. His name is Travis, and uh, Travis has a heart for God, but he has a mind for God. It's fascinating, and he doesn't want to be the speaker. He doesn't have that uh, inkling or desire to be the preacher. Uh, but he helps me in immeasurable ways. Uh, Travis is constantly sending me a text. Hey, I was reading this and this is what I saw. Or he'll ask a question and then he'll give his thought. And we get into these conversations, Dale. And you think that you're definitely talking to the most experienced pastor you have ever spent time yes. with. But Travis yes. is not. Travis is, I mean, you could give him all kinds of different titles. I think he's a great writer. I think he's, a, you, know, you know, X, <laughs> Y, and Z. But I tell you what, Travis is the alarm bell for me. Travis yes. is my wake up system. And even when I want and desire, because sometimes it's a desire to be in the dumps, you know, where I'm like, oh, I'm just the worst. And I just that's the way it is. Uh, here it is. Life is a sinner. <laughs> He's the one that comes in like, bro, you have the spirit of Jesus Christ within you, man. Jesus, who is the Christ reigns in your heart. And he'll say things like that. You're like, dude, you should be a pastor. But the truth is, that's not his, his, that's not what he wants. But what he brings to the table is invaluable. Like we can't put a price tag on it. Yeah. I look at that and say, yes, these are the gentlemen. These are the brothers and sisters that need to be treated with special you know, modesty. Where you say, these are the backbone of this church. This is the reason this church continues to move forward and preach Jesus with an unashamed and just unapologetic approach because I have confidence Listen. built in me through these supporting ligaments. Amen. Dale, what do you, what do you think, my brother? Listen, that is so powerful. It really is. Let me tell you something. I've been working with the, with the prison ministries for a long time. And one of these broadcasts, I, I, I hope you will allow me to do, when I would like to talk specifically about that, because yes. I have a testimony that's going to blow your mind. We're going to do that. You, you don't know about it. A lot of people don't know it, but me and God. But anyways, some of the men in prison that I still am in, in, in contact with from Michigan who contact me, one of them is, by the way, his name is George. He has two sons that are former football players, NFL football players. He's got a daughter who's a doctor. And this guy just barely made it through high school. He's doing a natural life sentence in, in, in prison. This man would blow your mind theologically. He would probably take a lot of professors at GCU and other seminaries, cemeteries, what you yeah. want to call them, and he would literally blow their minds <laughs> at the information that this man that God has revealed to him over the years. Alex, this guy contacts me on a regular basis. I even, have, I even allow him to call me now on my phone, and him and I have some of the best talks, and he just, there's times I walk away, I can't say nothing. Because of the insight that he has in the Lord. And I'm going to come to tears in that because these men in prison, when I tell you they study the word, they study the word. And uh, I try to help them out in any way I can. Uh, I would love to see God take some of them and say, you know what? This church ain't doing too well. You, George, go over here and straighten this church out. Or you, Billy, go over here and straighten that church out. Uh, there was a prophecy about that, by the way. There was a prophecy given back in the 90s that God was going to bring, was going to have a massive exodus from prisons of brothers and sisters in Christ who were totally sold out to him to replace pastors and teachers in the churches today that aren't doing the job. I would love to see that come to pass because these people know what they're talking about, Alex. No doubt about it. 
Yeah. You know, the, the Bible super, one of my favorite passages is uh, to watch your life and doctrine closely. I've always appreciated that passage. It always brings a lot of peace to me because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, your life, how you live, how you operate, your doctrine, what you live by, what guides that life. And I've always appreciated this because one of the things about life, living this life, is you cannot be shielded from the bad news. The good news shines especially bright when you know how dark the darkness really is. Yeah. And I feel like we, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll either, we'll ch- we'll pick a side and we'll either go 100% all grace, all smiles, all sunshine and rainbows constantly. And I think that's okay here. Th- the thing is though, is that men in prison, they have seen experience and understand fully just how dark the darkness is. So when a man is rescued in this position of life, they not only receive light, they experience oh, light. Praise. They shine that's light. It just true. jumps off of them. <laughs> and the reason is, is because they know. They know. They have a. You know. They talk about the fullness of Christ. They have a complete picture that you and I sometimes will miss out on. Well, uh, now I'm not saying I'm. Not, this is not a pro. Hey, let's all go to prison so we can learn some things. <laughs> but you have got to understand this world is messed up. You know, like we've been talking so much about division and politics and how Christians are fighting Christians because one guy doesn't believe in this and the other guy believes in this. And then we forget all about how God would see these things and say, guys, what you're doing, that's exactly what my enemy does. That's exactly his game plan. Divide and conquer. If a house is divided, it will fall. The house can be united, but only under one condition. I've only seen it work one time. And that is you got to be a part of the body. Well, Alex, this this one particular man, well, there was two. Uh, one guy, he went home to be with the Lord last year. He was my age. His name was Gerald. He was doing, also doing a life sentence. Uh, his crime was was he had killed a police officer. Uh, even though it was by accident, still he got a life sentence, and he knew he was never going to get out. George also knows that there's a possibility he may never get out. But if you could hear the praise that comes from their lips. And I asked George one day, I said, George, how do you do this? Because George has got... I think 40 years in now, inside behind the walls. And George says, listen, Dale, he said, God can't choose just everybody to serve people in here. So I'm willing to sacrifice my love to serve God in here to help other young men so that when they leave, they follow the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he's perfectly content with where he's at. Yeah, he would like to be out here eating chicken with me. But <laughs> I call him Chicken George. Um, in fact, I, I asked him one day, I said, well, I said, I said, George, I said, if God opens the doors for you, would you allow me to come and pick you up? And he says, absolutely. I said, what are we going to do? He said, we're going to find a farm. We're going to catch one of the chickens. We're going to kill it. We're going to eat it. <laughs> but this, <laughs> this guy went when I call him and I'll say, how are you? He goes, hallelujah, praise God, Dale, I'm great. You know, and this guy wakes up with us every day, Alex, every day. And that's the part of the body that we need to hear from. He's inside. You don't see him. He's exactly. one of those inside members that you don't see. But my gosh, the, the enthusiasm and the love and the joy and the knowledge that this man brings uh, to me and others uh, that have heard him. They just say, Dale, how, where did you meet this guy? And he's an incredible man. He really is. So praise God. I'm always fascinated. Sometimes people wonder this. Uh, I think what your friend has, George, I'm not going to call him Chicken George because he might get out one day and then I have to meet him. But uh, I know George, he he, he knows the secret of contentment. (laughs) (laughs) He He has the secret of contentment. Paul talked about it, and then Paul lived it because he was in Roman prison when he yes. writes the most yes, encouraging book in the New Testament. Yes. He writes Philippians, <laughs> chapter 2 in Philippians and chapter 4. If you're not reading that as a Christian, you're I mean, you're missing out on some inspiration. That was written from a yes. prison. You know, this This is what I'm saying. Like These yes. guys, they've had a chance to see God's light shine so bright especially in contrast to the reality of darkness. And I, I think the church, we could do a great job and, and just let people know 
these things are supposed to happen. When you see this kind of fighting and this kind of division in the world, that's supposed to happen to the world because their God is their stomach. Their God is the God of this air. But for you and I, and for the yeah. rest of those that would call themselves members of the body, we can't look to the hand and say, because you don't have my same political belief, I don't need you. The head can't even say that to the feet. And yet we're telling each other these things. Uh, I think it's just a huge mistake and it's a missed opportunity. So it is. I'm going to do is. this. Let's have some closing thoughts here. This is this is our favorite part of the show. This is what we call opinions and pitfalls. Opinions are the things that lift you up, the things that you get excited about and say, you know what? The body of Christ, it means this to me. And the reason it means this to, is because it means that it's going to inspire me. It's going to lift me up over time. For me, being a part of the body of Christ, the thing that's so encouraging about it is that I know Everybody that's that I read about, the people I admire, the people, I, they're all just a part of this thing. So in the Old Testament, you had the temple, and that temple, and you would see the Lord's glory from the temple. It would come down in a pillar of fire. I'm just, it was amazing. In the New Testament, it says, now I want you to know you're that temple. And you remember the 12, when that transition was happening, when the covenants were being changed, Jesus was in that upper room, and he was with the 12, and it was after his resurrection these men were the temple, and what did they see but the glory of God? I've got to be a part of that. If I'm not a part of that, it's a waste. It is a waste of time. It's a waste of life. If I'm a part of that, everything's okay. Everything that comes my way is acceptable. Everything that happens, is on. it's, it's understood that it's supposed to happen, but I yeah. trust in who I trust. I'm a part of this body, and God's body never dies. No, that's good. And that was basically my thought is that uh, my thought from the take of this whole thing is, is that I don't have to be important inside the body, but I bought, I want to see, I want to be one of those that contributes and saying, I am part of that body. And the thing that I do, even though it's not important to you, the thing that I do is, is helping you to maintain your life. If I had to be anything in the body, I would like to be one blood cell. Because <laughs> they travel the whole body, Alex. They go through the whole body, body every place. <laughs> and I'm one of those. I want to get around every place. You know, uh, but yeah, that's what I would, that's my take out of it. Is I, I would just like to be a part that keeps the whole body healthy and keeps the body functioning as God has designed it. That's my take out of it. Do my part. Uh, yeah, and, and you have done this. Uh, guys, you guys don't know, uh, or m many of you do, but some of you will not. Um, I would invite you, come be my friend on Facebook. Most of you are. And look for Dale, because I'll tell you what, I, I, these are my favorite times. I, my, you know what? One of my favorite things is not only listening to Dale's short uh, encouragement sermons and, and uh, moments of reflection that he'll put on Facebook. And they're only like two, three minutes long, but That's they're it. so powerful. There's, but my favorite thing is I always see my one of my favorite sisters on this planet. This woman has gone out of her way time and time again to encourage me and to tell me to keep pressing forward and don't worry about, uh, you know, the discouragement that you just keep going is Carolyn Nellums. And then I oh always see gosh. Carolyn put up a love sign. And I'm telling you, she doesn't know how to be superficial. So when you see those things, you know that you've yeah. impacted somebody. You really and, have helped a Christian walk in the light of this world. I, I just, and, it, to me, that goes beyond yeah. value. And, and, and one the of pitfalls. mine, that's, let's talk about yeah. the pitfalls here. But, but real, okay. real quick, one, one of the other one of my favorites, see, um, and, and I see her often on Facebook, is Felicia. Uh, Felicia always has a good word to say about somebody. I've never seen her put anything negative. And just like Carolyn and, 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 the, and the other ones, they, they just don't. It's not in them to do negativity. But if I can just teach Felicia, don't wear a mask when you're taking a picture. So <laughs> <laughs> Get that last complaint. <laughs> oh, I yeah, Felicia, uh, she really impacted me. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah she really she changed. She, Oh, man, she helped me tremendously. Uh, I, I, It's hard to explain, but I was just a husk of an individual going into seminary. Because the church had split and like my whole understand, I, I just couldn't understand how men couldn't get along and they were arguing over the most petty things. And and then everybody wanted us to lead. But I was like, lead what? I mean, this isn't even the body anymore. Like, that's the way I felt. I was just confused and hurt and harmed. And, uh, you know, you meet people and then you meet a person like Felicia, who's so dynamic and 
try to be discouraged around her. It's just not. It's just, no, it's, it's going to be can't. very difficult. You can't. <laughs> Alex, Alex, I, I got to share this one moment with you. The first time that I met Carolyn Nellis, uh, I had landed at the airport. I came down to the hotel. That's the GCU hotel. The first time they put us in the hotel there. And I went down there and I put my stuff away and I walked outside. And all of a sudden I see this wonderful glow of a lady come through. And she looked at me and I looked at her and she says, you're Dale, aren't you? We had never met before. She knew who I was. That's the Holy Spirit. I am serious. Ask her. She knew who I was, and we had never exchanged names, nothing. She said, you are Dale, aren't you? That was the most incredible moment I will ever, ever that, have in my life. <laughs> that's, I mean, I just recently, the reason I'm literally, I'm lit up because I just recently had a moment like that. Yeah. I never met this brother. We, we I went to the seminary, you know, uh, I met this, he was, his name was Mark. He just happened to be in our last class together. He said, hey, Alex, I'm also from Albuquerque, but he's not really from Albuquerque. He's from a city that's kind of close enough to Albuquerque that you would tell people you're from Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I ended up, I needed an Uber. Get this guy. He's, it's him. I did, We don't recognize each other at first. Wow. We start talking about life. I share my faith with him. He says, Alex, you're going to laugh at this. I'm also a part, I'm a, I'm a part-time chaplain. So I also serve God. And, uh, and I was like, well, hey, man, that's awesome. He's like, yeah, I'm over at this church, Anchor Point. I do the, um, the worship team. I was like, I know you. Because I remember Mark did the, the, the one that has the uh, worship leader attached to the divinity degree. And that's so fine. the two of us were just sitting there crying in his car. You know, we don't know what to do with ourselves. We're like, well, how is this possible? <laughs> Anyways, so let me try. Now i got to really right. try and find a, a low light here, a, a, a pitfall, because that was incredible. But, you know, for me, the pitfall is this. It is not a pitfall, but I think this is true. Romans 14 has a great analogy of what it takes to be mature and what it looks like to be immature. Mm -hmm. And I think that it goes against what we in a society think of mature and immature, because the immature are allowed to kind of do whatever they want, not necessarily, please, but if it offends someone, it's always the responsibility of the mature to take an action, to do something different. Hey, if my eating meat causes you to struggle, I will never eat meat in front of you. I'll just, I'll never do it again. That guy's considered mature. The one who is, he's not considered mature. And so I, I find this in the body too, is that if you want to see the change that we see in scripture and you want to be the mature, it's up to us. You know, if you want to be in that us category of mature, you really, you've got to take action. You can't just sit on the sidelines and hope it all works out. Pray as if everything does indeed depend on God, but then act in such a way that everything depends on you. Try, put out some kind of effort. Love is a verb. Love is an action. Love has got, to, it can't be conceptual. Love has got to be felt. It's got to be known. You've got to serve. These are pitfalls in the sense that I think all of a sudden we have to recognize our Christianity is not just a title, but it is our life. And if our, if our body is hurting, man, we can't stand for that. Instead, we say, no, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to try. Even though they hate me and they don't want to hear my opinion on something, I'm going to use the scriptures. I'm going to come back to the Bible. And if they're hurting, I'm going to hurt. And if they celebrate, I'm going to celebrate right then because Jesus is one. God is one. And we're a part of that. I love the way that this uh, all kind of summarizes itself at the very end in verse 27. He says, and he uses this analogy of the body. So we get that. But then he kind of summarizes things. And I want you to know that I'm talking to you. Verse 27 says, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. Mm -hmm. So who's he talking to? You. You. He's talking you. to me. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> wow. And this that's is, good. This is where I find, I, if you're going to have a pitfall, I guess that would be it. Yeah, no, <laughs> that, Dan, what do you I, think? I, I would agree. I agree. I, I can't think of anything else other, other than that. Um, my, my one of my pitfalls is that you know the body also needs to act in faith, um, because I, I like Tony Evans' version of faith is it's believing God as though He's telling the truth, uh, and I, I just think that oh, is amen. so. That's and that amazing. is, you know, uh, when when I hear people badmouth Peter, I get upset with it. Uh, but you know, the, Peter got out of the boat, but he started sinking. Yes, he did. But you know what? If you read the scriptures, no, he didn't start sinking. It said that he, he might have just, his feet might have got wet, 
But he cried out. He said, one thing he did that the church needs to do is they cried out to Jesus. If they're starting to sink, cry out to Jesus. If the body's starting to hurt, cry out to Jesus. Amen. And when we do that, Alex, I think when we do that, we just simply go to God and say this, I'm trusting you for this. My favorite passage in the Bible is, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. That's it. That, that would be my pitfall. Mm. But we don't we don't act in faith enough. My goodness. Well, guys, I hope that you've been encouraged here on a Sunday. Again, this has been Alex, and here with my guest, Pastor Dale Parkhurst, or as he goes by, Dale. <laughs> Pastor Dale, that's it. Or just what Dale. an honor to be here and spend time. That's it, brother. This, that's, this you got it. it. I love I'll you probably still much, call man. Pastor Dale because I love it, but. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this has been the Pinion Podcast. I hope you've enjoyed. Listen to me. I'm, I'm dead serious when I say this. Guys, we don't do this for attention or anything else. I love you to death. I hope you do well in life. I want to hear your victory stories. But if you have defeats, I'm here too. I, I'm, I'm not a fair. This is not fair weather friendship. And this I'm by no means a hired hand. Let me be a servant. If you need serving, let me jump in. I will I will try. Okay. I know I don't have answers, but God does. And I want to serve him. And you and I are part of the same body. Guys, to God be the glory. And we'll see you next time. All right. God bless.